Hello my soccer universe, let's get this day started with the final two videos. It actually has been yesterday a blast doing those three quick, 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 uh, not editing and shipping them off. Uh, this was uh, a real relief and I'm looking forward to do this now. I can concentrate on uh, other stuff as well and you know I enjoy doing these review videos. Um, as I said, we talk here about uh, Liga Portugal and La Liga, probably in that order, because I, I want to actually switch that, you know, otherwise Portugal gets a little bit short straight, which it anyway gets, because I don't get to see too much of it, but I think it is a very, very interesting league, that's why I still keep it in there. Uh, also, I uh, say that... Um, the will be today will be the stats cast so if you have been looking for all the tables and stats in the previous videos they come today a little bit later on i'll make the stats cast where you get all the tables with some music and very minimal commentary uh from my part there okay um last thing i also want to say that i also uh, changed the order that i put the shirts up there this is not i you i did it always by expected stands blah 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 i actually decided to mix it up a little bit more uh since i uh, run the stats and anyway and they are very quickly run let's look at winners and losers so the teams that are kind of here behind me actually improved in their expected standings in a way and the other ones you know not so much so uh the big winners in portugal as we'll see of porto and um sporting although benfica also did and in spain it's although they only got draws granada and espanol had their biggest changes and then i was actually so, so surprised that even valencia is doing well but you know other results pay play in their favor so that's where it goes <sighs> My feeling so far is that uh, for these two leagues, I think in Portugal, it might be that Benfica uh, could pull away, but so we had it last season. Um, it might be a tight three-way race. I think uh, I got feeling at the moment tells me that I think uh, Portugal might have one of the more exciting title races this season because uh, Sporting still uh, is uh, playing firm and I think both Porto and Benfica wanna get back uh, to their titles especially I think Benfica it has been a while and you have the feeling that in both seasons before they should have been considered favorites and in Spain also at the moment it's a little bit of a crapshoot I would say what I said last season uh, last week last season well, I said last week that I think the strongest first team squad is Real Madrid. The strongest overall squad is Atletico. At the moment, I have to say I'm changing my tune in the sense that I actually have a real feeling that uh, Real Madrid might do something and might entertain along the way. Barcelona, if they would become champions, this would be to me one of the bigger upsets uh, this season. It just does not look uh, that way, but then I think it's a very even league. Would would I love to say that Sevilla or another team could uh, get in there? Yes, but I honestly don't see it. I think it's a duel between the two Madrid teams, and I would at the moment give the edge to Real Madrid. But let's see what injuries will do. But I want to start in Portugal. Uh, here are the results, and uh, you know I go through the big three. Porto had probably the most impressive win with a 5 0 win over Mermor Range. Um, in a top duel, Sturil actually was uh, high up there, and so this was not an easy game for Sporting that they win just uh, 1 0 away from home. And then Mefica yesterday in the evening uh, in a traditional duel uh, between uh, them and uh, Boavista get a 3 1 win. Um, I saw a little bit, I think Braga Tontela for the longest time was 0 0, and that it ended the 3 1 kind of uh, surprised me. All that it means is that now up top we have all three uh, Benfica, Porto and Sporting uh, with the latter two being uh, two points be uh, four points behind already Benfica. So Benfica looking rather uh, strong at this very moment in winning uh, the league. In Spain, um, first one that we have to a little bit talk about is Rayo Vallecano, only for the fact that A, uh, they play quite attractive and I know I have to watch them and also attractive are their jerseys, as I said, they are one of uh, my, fav my, my favorites, but Radamel Falcao, who just signed, scores his first goal for uh, Rayo, 
that is also something to note about. Uh, no, no, but I actually, on Saturday, I started my watching streak uh, very late because I said, okay, uh, Atletico against Athletic Club, that sounds very, very, very good. This could be an interesting game. No, no, no. This was a bore fest in many, many ways. However, uh, some fire was added at the end. I mean, uh, a referee, I think it was Manzano is, is the name. Yes, Manzano uh, did his best <laughs> to make the game a little bit um, yeah, worthy of talk. But I have to say, uh, for, for, for Athletic Club in those lime green jerseys, I know why Serie A wants to ban green jerseys because it doesn't look good. If you have green, you have count of it. Just all green is not a look that I like. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I, I guess you know, for most of the time, Athletic Club did it quite well and could hold Atleti um, well at bay and actually were more dangerous. Uh, yes, in the second half, Llorente hits the post with a shot. Uh, but equally, Iñaki Williams, if he could put a ball in, or even the lay, lay down via libre, uh, Bilbao might have won that, that it won, and not undeservedly so. Uh, the big talking point, of course, is the red card for Joao Felic, because he gets a yellow for where he was clearly pulled. This was not a yellow for Joao Felic, he did not do the foul. But what he, do, he, should, he, should, do, he should not uh, do this gesture. To the referee, who anyway is already a little bit of a diva, and then what? Re so that got Atleti already super furious. And I think what killed him even more is that in stoppage time, the referee. I think it was four, four, six minutes. Uh, no, six minutes. It was shown, and Atleti have a last ditch. F uh, 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 no, a Bilbao actually have a, a corner kick. Or they were similar kick, kick, kicking off of the game. And just when the clock hits six minutes, the referee uh, cuts off the game. When Atletico had a car car cut, like where Korea would have run freely on goal. Not good referee. Uh, that attack you should have run or either to prefer. I mean, the red card, I know Joao Felice should not have done it, but uh, there should have been a yellow for Joao, Joao Felice to, uh, in the first place. So uh, Atletico definitely furious right uh, there and then uh, Real Sociedad and Sevilla rather disappointing nil nil again I was happy that I didn't watch that one um, it could have been a goal but Oyarza Bal uh, misses a penalty and if you have seen the midweek action uh, Sevilla faced now four penalties in two games and only one was converted yeah Salzburg did a really bad job and Oyarza Bal probably needs to take a break. Um, I only want to mention Betis against Espanyol because Espanyol, after conceding the winning goal for Atleti very, very, very late, they now get very, very late uh, the equalizer through Cabrera at Betis, um, who who turned the game around just before the half. But then, uh, we, 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 with the man less, was probably not quite deserved from what I hear. Uh, uh, Real Madrid, quite resilient. Um, that was a... Again, I watched Juve Milan. But I watched the highlights and I have to say, this was a pretty uh, tough game where um, Valencia really shows that we might have Valencia back. I think... Um, I hope that they, 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 they don't take, take us to... Uh, this uh, defeat will not kill their spirits, but Valencia really pulled, pulled in fine, and Carlos Soler, their best player, had to come, come off early on. Um, and you could see that um, at the end, the um, you know they didn't have all the strength and anymore. They were, were trying to get a lead uh, over the line, but when the lead through Hugo Duro came in the 66, that was not undeserved at all. However, Real Madrid, as, as, as I said, I mean, they brought on Kanko Kavinga, Rodrigo and Jovic and that changed the dynamic and then a, a triple change also by uh, Bordelas, uh, who uh, took a, a duro, Gregadesh and uh, Maxi Gomez. Yes, maybe their uh, strength was uh, kind of dwindling, but it was a very defensive cha cha changes and at that moment the momentum had already swung towards Real, uh, Real Madrid, uh, especially Kamavinga giving a lot of esprit to the uh, team. And so uh, Vinicius Jr. gets an equalizer. Yeah, took a very bad deflection. And then uh, he also assists Bonsema. And it, I, I remember when Bonsema said, don't pass to Vinicius. Yeah, I think that has turned around. He is becoming one of the better players in La Liga at the moment. And Real Madrid get another win. 
Uh, and as, 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 as I said, uh, if they can stay healthy, I think they are a big favorite. Barcelona, Granada. <laughs> Barcelona is, does not look good. And Kuman is in trouble, although I think... I have to say, it's not Kuman's problem. In many ways, although he might not be the best coach for Barcelona either. Uh, for the Austrian perspective, Demir Alar uh, made his starting, <laughs> his starting 11 debut. Uh, so I think the first Austrian since uh, Hans Kranke, who starts for Barcelona. And what's even more, that yeah, uh, El Rapid, where he came from. Yeah, we didn't want to start with you. Don't want to put him right, uh, uh, right in. Tells you everything what's going wrong with Rapid. Duarte gives uh, Granada a very early lead and yes, Barcelona had some chances and I think by the pure amount of chances, they, which were not many, but they had a few, the way the game gone, that they got the equalist and low, late through Araujo after Gavi assist says everything, but also tells you everything, a Gavi assist to Araujo, uh, defender. This was anemic from Bar Barcelona who had a horrible coming back from the international break. First you lose to Bayern and now only one one against Granada. Things pointing down. Well, that was it from me from all the way from Western Europe. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything uh, where you think La Liga is going and so on. Or La Liga Portugal and so on and so forth. In any case, I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!